Assalamu alaikum. This is lecture 18 for investment and input finances. In our previous lecture, we have started this chapter, Efficient Capital Market, where we have uh, tried to give you an idea on capital market and try to give you an idea regarding efficient capital market, what is efficiency regarding capital market, and some necessities along with that. So to mention our, in our previous class, we have mentioned that role in allocation of capital, promoting fair pricing of securities, and also implication of our investors and market participants are the three important topics regarding the necessity of efficient capital market. So today, we will be learning about the forms of efficient capital market. The first one is strong, the second one is semi-strong, and the last one is weak form. So we will learn about the uh, three forms of capital market, starting with the weak one, the weak form of capital, weak form of efficient capital market. So in a weak form of efficient capital market, the prices of securities fully reflect all past da trading data and price movements. This means if a stock's price has been consistently rising or falling in the past, that information is already incorporated into the current stock price. As a result, using technical analysis, which involves studying historical price patterns and trends, does not give investors an advantage in predicting future price movements. In a weak form efficient market, there are no patterns or trends that can consistently help investors predict the future direction of stock prices. Suppose, an individual sees Grameen Phone, sees the stock price of Grameen Phone continuously decline on Mondays and increase in value on Fridays. He may assume that he can profit if he buys the stock at the beginning of the week and sells at the end of the week. If, however, Grameen Phone's price declines on Monday but does not increase on Friday, the market is considered weak form efficient. Similarly, let's, let's assume that Apple company has beaten analysts' earnings expectation in the third quarter consecutively, consecutively for the last five years. Mr. X, a buy and hold investor, notices this pattern and purchase the stock a week before it reports this year's third, year, third quarter earnings in anticipation of Apple's share price rising after the release. Unfortunately for Jenny, or unfortunately for Mr. X, the company's earnings fall short of analysts' expectations. So the theory states that the market is weakly efficient because it does not allow Mr. X to earn an excess return by selecting the stock based on historical earnings data. So let's move on to our semi-strong form. where security prices fully reflect all publicly available information, uh, including information from financial statements, news articles, and other public announcements that could impact a company's performance on po prospects. When new information becomes available, it is qu quickly reflected in the stock price. As a result, neither fundamental analysis nor inside information can give investors an advantage in this type of market. In a semi-strong form efficient market, investors cannot make above average profits by trading on publicly available information. So for example, stock ABC is trading at $10 one day before it is scheduled uh, to report earnings. A news report is published the evening before its earnings call that claims ABC's business has suffered in the last quarter due to adverse government re regulation and COVID-19. When trading opens the next day, 
ABC stock falls to $8 from 10 reflecting movement due to available public information. But the stock jumps to $12 after the call because the company reported positive results on the back of an effective cost-cutting strategy. So, the, so in this case, um, the news is the cost-cutting strategy, which is, if available to investors, would have allowed them to profit handsomely. Moving on to our strong form of efficient capital market, where security prices reflect all available information, including both public and private information. This means that even inside information, which is non-public information about a company known only to its insiders, such as management or employees, is quickly and fully incorporated into the stock price. It is a strong form efficient market. No investor can uh, gain or advantage. No investor can gain an advantage into the stock price uh, over others based on inside information as it is already reflected in the stock price. This level of efficiency is considered the most robust as it ensures that all relevant information regardless of its source is instantly factored into security prices. So if we give an example of such strong form of efficient capital market, we can say that how strong f form efficiency could play out in real life. Uh, for example, uh, if a chief, ex uh, chief technology officer, a CTO of a public technology company believes that his firm will begin to lose customers and revenues after the internal rollout of a new product featured to beta te testers, the CTO's fear, uh, fears are confirmed and he knows that the official rollout will be a flop. This would be considered inside information. So the CTO decides to take up a short take up a short position in his company, effectively betting against the stock price movement. If the stock price declines, the CTO will profit, and if the stock price increases, he'll lose money. However, when the product feature is released to the public, the stock price is unaffected and does not decline even though customers are disappointed with the product. This market is strong from efficient because even the inside information of the product flop was already priced into the stock, the CTO would lose money in this situation. So this is all for today. Thank you for attending today's session. Inshallah, we will continue our next session on efficient capital market theories. Some theories we'll discuss there in our lecture in lecture 19 and we will provide you some empirical evidence and criticism regarding the efficient market hypothesis thank you very much